What up, black man? Welcome to the Dude Make Something podcast, where we focus on helping black men to overcome mediocrity to become beneficial men for their community by discussing faith, creativity, art and culture, personal development, and mental health management. I'm your host, Jamile Cal Penn. I hope you all are doing well, protecting your mental mental, finding time for an emotional release valve, and um, making the most of your life, trying to enjoy it, you know, looking for silver and gold throughout your day, making sure to find some time for some blue, blues and greens and just enjoying this journey of this gift of life that we've been given. In today's episode, I really just want to break down what's happening next with the podcast. So coming soon, I will be with the podcast, with the YouTube channel, and even with my blog that I have, I'm rebranding or going in slightly different direction. So overall, there is going to be a rebrand of the podcast. And I want to explain why and give you a little look into what's happening and what's to come. First off, let's do a mental check-in real quick. Um, I am doing okay, I'm doing all right. My high this week is I'm starting to get paid for my job, <laughs> which is good, which is nice. Um, you know, the contract that I'm doing because I, you know, my family, we got COVID and that kind of messed up the payments and me getting money and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes when you start a new job, you're kind of in the hole for a little bit. so. That's kind of how my contract is right now, which, you know, it's frustrating, but I'm grateful, but I'm starting to, you know, reap from the time that I've been investing. So I'm grateful for that. A low, a quick low, um, where I work, there are a lot of people who have dogs and I'm not against dogs or anything like that, but it's something bothersome to me where people are really, really comfortable with having their dogs just kind of wander around or get really close to you. And it, it's like I'm, sometimes I have feelings about people or when people treat animals better than they treat people. And the area that I'm in and where I work kind of gives me those vibes that they treat pets and dogs and cats or whatever animals they have a lot better than people who say um, don't have their own homes. And that really, really bothers me. And it really, really makes me uncomfortable. Um, so every day, I see something like that or experience something like that. And uh, that, that can kind of be a low for me, you know, um, me make the most of it. All I do is go to work, do my job, then I go home. And again, I'm grateful to have a job, to be able to have this contract right now in this season of my life. So I'm very, very, very grateful. Creating, have I been creating anything? Uh, yes, I've been writing. Again, writing has been like the main thing that I've been doing recently. Um, I think I mentioned in the previous podcast episode that I've been working on a book. I'm working on a book that I will be releasing either by the end of this year or early next year, um, Lord willing, that everything works out that I believe will be very beneficial for whoever reads it. Um, But particularly, again, with the majority of the content that I make, it's for black men. Um, But for whoever reads it, you know, there's resources and things in there to help you with the highs and lows of dealing with life. And there, there's a lot of wisdom and uh, information and advice that I've been given that I want to share in this book. So that's what I've been working on. And I'm, I'm really excited. I'm kind of proud that I've been dedicating time to actually doing it, you know, being consistent, sitting down, setting aside time to actually write. And um, it's exciting. It's exciting. Even though like some days I feel like my writing is bad, but I know I just need to get it out first so that I can then go back and edit or rewrite rewrite and rewrite. So I'm excited about that. But all right, let's jump in to this whole redirecting and reformatting and all that stuff. So as you may have noticed, and a lot of <laughs> and a lot of uh, some of the content I've been making recently, like shorts, and I'm mentioning in my podcast and different posts and stuff like that, I talk about being beneficial often, maybe you heard it, I think that's really, really important. And maybe you've also noticed that a lot of my content is directed towards black men. So the big thing is I'm going to be rebranding and changing the name of the podcast from do make something to the beneficial black man. And so that's going to be the beneficial black man podcast, the beneficial black man YouTube channel and the beneficial black man uh, blog and whatever else. So yes, transitioning from dude make something, which was really, really, really focused and heavy on using creativity to kind of manage uh, emotional and mental health. Um, to now focusing on this idea <clears throat> or this concept, or really the goal is to help black men to become beneficial men 
for their community. And so I'm still going to be talking about mental health. I'm still going to be sharing tips and advice and things that I've, I've learned and that I'm learning in my content to help us better manage our mental and emotional health. Um, but I'm trying to be very clear in my branding and stuff like that. So it's easier for people to find, find the content because even in conversation with my wife talking about my um, the name of the podcast and stuff like that. She's like, one, when you say dude, <laughs> she makes you think of, you know, you're, you're talking to white guys or something like that. And I was like, well, I can understand that. But I don't know. I don't know, I guess in my circle of friends, which majority of them are, are, are black, um, I would say dude from time to time. So I, I don't know. But I, I didn't, on paper, that makes sense. You know, like if you were searching for something that, that would come up, I, I'm sure. the The title itself doesn't really capture what I'm hoping to accomplish, which is to help black men become beneficial men um, for their communities, for themselves and for the community uh, at large. So that's what I'm trying to do, you know, um, have the content to be more dedicated and focused on becoming a beneficial man. And I'll be sharing content related to that as well as my own journey. So in the podcast, you know, I have this section talking about like my mental health check-in. What I want to do is make it tangible for other people, for men, for you who are, who are listening to know that I'm on this journey too, to become a beneficial man. Like I am definitely not there. I have a lot of work to do and I'm going through the process of having my mind re renewed, working through my own, like managing my own mental and emotional health, just trying to overall become beneficial for myself. Like I want to be healthy and good for myself. And then those in the circle of influence that I have, and it starts with people closest to me, you know, like my family, my wife, church community, all that stuff. Like I want to be good so that I can be good to other people and good for other people. And ultimately as a believer for God's glory, like that's the big thing for me. Like that's I talked about that with my wife one time too. I talk to my wife a lot, which is probably a good thing, <laughs> but I've, I've also mentioned this to um, brothers and people I'm close to that. Um, the one thing that I really want to leave behind is for glory and for good. And what I really mean by that is I believe we're all called with a purpose. It looks different for different people, but the main goal of that purpose is to glorify God and to be of good or benefit to other people. So that concept, that belief, that that purpose and that drive, I want to leave that behind. And I want to impact and encourage as many people as I can, particularly black men, to live similarly for glory and for good. But I know that starts with us being our best selves, being beneficial, being healthy, being in a good place for ourselves, And so with that, the beneficial black man, that's the goal to help us as black men get to our best and healthiest, healthiest state so that we can be beneficial to others, beneficial to ourselves. Because if we're not healthy, if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can be a detriment to ourselves. It's got to start with us changing our mind, changing our beliefs, doing the work, the necessary work so that we can live excellent lives, so we can live beneficial lives. Again, ultimately for glory, for good, and also for joy. Like this life is to be lived and enjoyed. And there's so many things that I, I believe the most high is placed in this world and in our lives to delight in. And so, yes, the whole, whole point and purpose of uh, this redirection or this rebranding it's to really clear and focus on that, that I'm addressing black men as my target audience, black men, and I want to help them become beneficial men. And it's really for people who, really for men who, you know, sometimes you feel purposeless or you know that there's more out there for you and you, you kind of feel lost or just looking for encouragement to live a better life. If you are wrestling with emotional or mental health and things like that, I want this to be a tool. I want this to be a resource. And at some point, yeah, I would love this to be a, a community where brothers can come together and help one another to live better lives and for us to continue to develop, you know, uh, personal development and self-development and all that stuff so that we can be good, so that we can be beneficial to those around us. So, you know, that's the overarching rebranding thing. So eventually the podcast will no longer be named Dude Make Something. A YouTube channel won't be called Dude Make Something. It will be The Beneficial Black Man. And so their format for the show, for the podcast, is pretty much going to be similar to what it is, has been past few episodes. I'm going to have a mental health check-in. I'm going to then have two other sections where I might be discussing something that's a cultural topic or something in society or whatever. 
kind of giving commentary or thoughts about that. And then also kind of sharing whatever wisdom that I've been given that can help uh, renew our minds and continue to help us grow and help us to um, grow and become beneficial. So like the thing is, I kind of already started this transition. <laughs> like I already started this rebranding. I guess a year or so ago, I was doing two two other podcasts. One was called Dude Make Something, which was focusing on, at that time, it was really about trying to help regain creativity in your life, you know? And uh, the tagline was, Dude Make Something, stop adulting from killing your, your creativity. And so, you know, that was kind of the concept, like work in everyday life drains us. And as we grow up, Sometimes uh, as we grow up and we mature and we get older, that creativity, that drive that we had, maybe when we were children, kind of gets smothered because of everyday life and things like that. So I wanted to focus on kind of grabbing that back because that's something I was trying to do. And I really am still trying to do in my own life. Then I had another po- another podcast called Composing My Life where I was talking about faith and spirituality and things related to that. So I kind of fuse those together. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking that fusion and then leveling it up to something else altogether, you know? So it's a process, but I talked about this a little bit more and I kind of go into depth with a previous episode and a previous uh, video that I did. The video on YouTube is entitled, when you're at the bottom pivot, stop being mediocre and become excellent. And it is episode 16, you know, the podcast. And so I'm going to leave a snippet here or play a little clip from the explanation behind that rebranding behind that transition, because I think it really captures the heart behind what I'm trying to do here. What I'm most interested in right now, I got some notes. What I'm most interested in now is uh, helping black men to overcome the paralyzed state of gray mediocrity that we've grown accustomed to. And, um, I believe it's a deep issue that affects us and our people on a spiritual, soul, and physical level. And as black men, we are the leaders, protectors, guides, and providers for our community and, you know, for our people and for our nation as a whole. Um, And what I mean by nation is, I mean, like black people, like the Hebrew nation, black people as a collective. So this can go from anyone that lives in the United States, lives in Europe, lives in China, whatever. If you're a black man, you're part of our people. (laughs) That's just, that's my take on it. I really think from what I've seen and just looking throughout history and even currently and what's going on in the world today, we've, we've been out of alignment, out of alignment for centuries, for a very long time as, as black men. Um, and now I believe we are at a place that is probably very, very low. <laughs> like I think history over time has been like this wave. And at one point we were pretty high up. We we're in a good place. And oftentimes that's what we try to reference and go back to. Like we were kings and chiefs and stuff like that. We reference back to that. Well, there's truth to that, sure. But over time, that standard has declined. And we've gotten to a place where we're far from where I believe God wants us to be and where we need to be for our people and even for ourselves. And I think we're at that low point. And this is a very critical and pivotal point because we have the chance and the opportunity to change the trajectory of our role and, and even just the, the state of our people. Now I believe we are at our lowest point, which is a pivotal place to be in. We can either do the work to change and get back to our excellent and great status, where I believe ultimately God wants us to be, or we can continue to stay paralyzed in this stupor of mediocrity, living below the standard that we set for, uh, that was set for us in Christ Jesus. And when we do that, we let our communities, our families, and our people crumble and get to a place, um, honestly, where we're kind of at right now. And this is super important to me, super important. I, I, I believe there's a need and a desire in us, black men, for the former, for things to actually get better, to take this time to actually make a change for ourselves, for our brothers, for our sisters, for our whole community. Um, and we have to do the work. You know, I, I believe it's God's plan for black men to be burdened, to change the trajectory of our culture for the benefit of our people, of our legacy, and ultimately for the whole world. Um, I'm not not saying that our focus should be on everybody else. I'm saying right now, 
we should be focused on us. <laughs> I, I'm definitely a, a strong proponent of the B1 or black first mentality and focus. Um, th- I, I'm just being honest. I think that's where we should be. Um, everybody else, culturally, nationwide, n- nationality speaking and whatever, they focus on themselves. You know, white people focus on themselves. Hispanic, Latinx individuals, their culture focuses on them. Uh, Native Americans focus on them. Indians focus on them. Uh, Other people groups, they focus on them, their families, their community, their legacy. And we're often going going elsewhere and not really doing what we need to do to build up our community and build up our people. And I get it. You know, a a lot of that um, can stem from the fact that a lot has been taken from us over the years. You know, we look at slavery and things like that, but we are at the place now where we can choose, that we can put in the work and actually do what we need to do to improve. And I think it starts with us focusing on us. <laughs> we need to stop, you know, let everybody else do what they need to do. And then we need to do the work so that we can be better for ourselves and also for our communities, for our wives, our, our the black women in our community. We need to do that for our future, you know, our, the black children that come from the black families that exist in the black community. We need that. We need to do that. And again, as black men, it's our responsibility. We're leaders and we got to get back in good leadership. <laughs> we need to get in a good standing so that we can actually do what we're supposed to do, which is leading, protecting, providing, guiding, and making sure that our community is good and that is thriving. And ultimately I, I do believe God wants us to do that. Um, I, I, I mean, we can do research and maybe I'll touch on this on, in some future episodes, but I do believe, you know, we're God's chosen people. And um, part of that is why we ended up here 400 years ago. But anyways, again, that's a whole other discussion. But ultimately, I want black men to get better because we need to get better for ourselves and for our community. So, yeah, that's really the heart behind what I want to accomplish here with the beneficial black man. Definitely go listen to the whole episode. Again, that's episode 16 of the podcast. So you can get a fuller understanding of where I'm coming from. Or if you're watching on YouTube, go and check out when you're at the bottom. Well, you know what? I'll just put the little thing. <laughs> the little tab will be here or the link will be in the descri- description. So you can, you can go and check that out. So yes, again, overall, the whole goal with a beneficial black man is to help black men to be better for themselves and others. So they, and we, black men in general, can live beneficial lives. And that's something I'm going to be discussing probably in the next episode. Um, but I'm going to be discussing what that actually looks like being a beneficial man and living a beneficial life. Real quick, one of the reasons that I guess one of the reasons I felt like it's really important that I do this rebranding is I'm having I don't I don't think it's a quarter life crisis or midlife crisis or anything like that. But recently I've been going through some trials and stuff like that, and it's really making me consider time and it's really making me consider a life. And what I mean by that is. One day I got an argument with my wife and there are times we really aren't doing too well, doing, doing too hot. And it's kind of a, kind of a struggle. And I talked about that in another, (laughs) another episode about, and in a blog post too, kind of saying that like, you know, if my wife divorced me, it would make sense. And I talk about that again, I'll put the link somewhere or you can find the podcast episode, but it's just really acknowledging that like I, I have failed her in a lot of different ways and haven't been that great of a husband. And I mean, and and the reality is like, we've been struggling in dealing with a lot of stuff and um, it's been hard. It's been really hard and it's been really challenging. And sometimes there are good moments, you know, when it's up and then there are other moments where it's really, 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 really down. In one of our recent, I don't know, I guess in one of our recent arguments or whatever, I guess it was the day afterwards, I really was wrestling with this thought like, what would happen if today was the last day I had on earth? And I was really pondering that and thinking about that. And there were a couple of questions that I was asking myself with that in mind. Like, you know, say I got up in the morning and at midnight of that same day or midnight of the next day, I just didn't wake up the next day. And so I try to wake up if I can around six six in the morning or whatever. And if I only had, if I'm doing the math right, (laughs) if I only had 18 hours left of this day, what would I do? How would I spend it? And um, 
I guess the motivation behind it is like having the energy to actually focus on the things that really matter to me and the things that really matter to me include my wife. <laughs> and um, so I had these four questions that I've been asking myself. I try to ask myself every day and keep that, that concept and that thought in mind. Like if today was the last day of my life, four questions are who would I desire to be? What would I desire to do? What would I desire to give? And what would I desire to leave behind? And so I've been wrestling with those questions every day and doing my best to answer those questions. And even if, you know, Lord willing, I then today won't be my last day here. You know, you know, God blesses me with another day. I can reflect on the previous day and be like, what's out of alignment with the answers of my questions? So I can focus on changing the things that I need to change. I say all that to say and thinking about time, thinking about, you know, death and um, really trying to get my priorities straight or whatever, realizing that we don't have a lot of time. And the book of Psalms, the 90th Psalm, is a verse that says, pretty much God help us to number our days or to consider our days or count our days, be aware of the days that we have left. It's a level of self-reflection to really consider how are we using our time? That's really encouraging me and motivating me to like not waste time anymore. And I don't want to do that with this podcast or with this channel or this content. If rebranding and changing the name of the podcast and changing the name of the channel helps me to help more people and to help more men, I'm not going to push back against it. Like I want to get to work. I want to do as much purpose work as I can while I have life. And I also like want to keep this energy and this fervor to love and serve those around me each and every day. Because I know sometimes we can get really complacent, you know, with routine and doing things the same way every day. And sometimes we can take the day for granted. And I don't want to do that anymore. I don't, I don't want any of you to do that anymore. Every day literally is a gift, you know, and I think it was a Kung Fu Panda, <laughs> the turtle sensei guy, you know, who was explaining that, you know, there's a saying, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. I, I believe that and I understand that like every day, even if there, it seems like it's going to be a hard day, every day that we open our eyes, it is it's a present. And we have the opportunity to live and to choose and to make a difference and to be beneficial and to find joy, to find the silver and gold in situations, to be able to embrace and encounter the blues and greens of outside and in the most highest creation, uh, to experience love, to experience passion, to experience joy. Like all of that is there for us, but very often we can take it for granted. And I, honestly, I believe the enemy of our soul wants us to take it for granted so that we get off track so that we get out of alignment, so that we're not moving in purpose. But I am committed to helping as many people to fight against that and to live beneficial lives, to help as many black men to live that way. And I wanna help myself to do that, you know, and committing to being an example and sharing my journey as well. So yeah, again, that's the, that's the whole point of this rebranding, general overview, channel, the podcast, all the name is changing formats changing some of the stuff that we're doing is changing but like those are the big things the the name format of the podcast and um, the focus is really on helping black men to become beneficial men for their community so the show will no longer be called the do make something podcast but it will be the beneficial black man podcast or the beneficial black man channel wherever you if you're watching on youtube or um, you know listening to your favorite podcast and app that's what you're going to look for you know, so thank you guys again for watching and supporting. I, I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or if there's anything that maybe you would be curious to know um, if I have opinions or thoughts about or whatever. Keep this in mind. Black men, you're called for more than mediocre living. You're here for a purpose, to live for glory and for the good of others. Let's do the work and keep choosing to become beneficial for our community. I believe in you. I believe in you. Until next time, go make something for yourself, of yourself, and for God's glory and the good of others. Peace.